our buildings and smuggling nuke, nuke bombs across our borders. The terrorists are within our borders. They don't notice this stuff. They just want the American housewives. It's such a national security threat. You know, well, what do you guys, do you have any information on the latest of what's going on with the southern border and the Arizona militia? Well, we have an illegal invasion going on that is uh, reducing and replacing our population. Yeah, there's, um, we're going to have a guest on our show in a couple weeks. Actually, he's going to be on two times this month. His name is Frosty Woldridge. And he has a book called America's Invisible Invasion, I believe, or something to that effect. And he, I was talking to him on the phone a week or so ago, and he said basically from what he's found that we have about two years or so left. If we don't curtail this problem or stop this problem, this illegal invasion, he said it'll be so far beyond our hands then that there'll be no turning back. And what's happening is we're bankrupting our, our medical system, our school system, our social services system, our crime system. is all being just destroyed yep. because the New World Order elite and their, their puppets like George Bush and John Kerry or allowing this to happen. Yeah, they're purposely what's allowing happening, it because they want Nasera, isn't that right? Huh? They want the Nasera agenda. Well, what they're trying to do is reduce America to a third world right. nation status, and so we'll be a planet of third world nations. Yeah, it'll be like this big socialist slash fascist world where the, the corporations, which equal the fascist part of it, will, will rule the world, and everyone else will be on this socialist equalized level. There, there will be no more... You know, America as we know it today, this land where, you know, if people actually want to strive and do better, they'll be able to. I mean, they just want to reduce everyone to this socialist this equal uniformity. Level. Right. And isn't there a plan to depopulate the earth down to 500 million? Well, I mean, that's, that's, I've read that. I mean. Well, the leading world nations, all the populations are significantly reduced with people aren't having children anymore. Well, certain in those people nations. Are, yeah. What's happening is you have countries like China and India and all the other third world nations Latin America. Where, where they have a population bomb. Right. And then the other countries, you know, the the, the Western nations and right. industrial Britain, like, United States, Italy. Europe, you know, the European countries, they're all their birth rates are actually decreasing and they're and America's not the only one with an immigration problem. All of these countries yep. in Europe have the same problem. And, um, the American just, people should be asking why in wartime are our borders wide open? If yeah. we're so worried about terrorist attacks, why are we allowing illegal aliens to come across our borders? Do they, uh, did they pass this act where the truckers don't even have to be checked at the stops and they can just come on through? Oh, yeah, yeah. They, um, they gave special treatment to Mexican trucks under NAFTA that they can come up here and none of them have to follow the same safety Standards that the American trucks do. So they could be filled with avail of immigrants. Oh yeah, I mean of course. And no one's checking them. Yeah, no. I mean like people. Some people get mad at me when I use this analogy, but if you look at a country like a car, and a car runs good when it has clean oil, well, what happens when you open up the the oil cap and you start pouring some kind of other fluid in there? The car doesn't run as good, and people say, oh, you're a racist or that. It's like no, I don't have anything at all against any other race of people. What I do have something against is being manipulated by the powers that be that have a plan and an agenda, and they're, they're allowing this, this illegal immigration to happen, and then they're pitting one group against the right. other, the and road, you know, divide and conquer tactics. And another way to look at it is we're not a melting pot anymore. We're a salad bowl. <laughs> yeah, you know, I don't hate anybody, but I love my country. Exactly. Right. You know, and I, and I want my own spot and my own, you know, country. Uh, you know, pretty soon we're going to have to have our own states. So we well, have, you know, we have to wonder how much Americans really do love their country if they're not willing to stand up and fight for their own freedom. Exactly. Well, like I said, I mean, do it now or, or, you know, while your hands are free because soon they're going to be in handcuffs. Yeah, I mean, we said a few days ago what, what we really need in this country, and it's, um, it's not a pleasant thing to talk about or, or conjecture on, but what we need is we need to get knocked on our butts good and hard as a wake-up call, because right now we're still too complacent, we're too apathetic, and someday, at some point, you know, we're going to wake up and have another 9-11 or, or an economic collapse or something like that, and people are going to, it'll be like a boxer that's punch drunk. They're going to say, what hit me, you right. know? And then we're going to see what we're made of, if we have what it takes to get up and dust ourselves off and fight again, or if we'll just keep laying down. But right now, we're not fighting. 
And um, the people in control are well aware of that. And most people aren't even dissenting. Thomas Jefferson right. said dissent is the highest form of patriotism, and he wanted us to have a revolution every generation or so to keep our government in check, and we, we are definitely not doing it. No, we're just, we're just, we're, we're apathetic. We're like, get the news off, so get my Dane back on. Yeah, yeah, turn yeah. Survivor on. Yeah, I like Survivor. <laughs> yeah, reality TV. <laughs> that's the only show of the year I'll sit and watch. Yeah, Wing TV is reality TV. Yeah, that's reality. That's that's good news. I mean, but the the, the whole the whole thing about it could stuff coming up is, is there is a lot of things coming up that are coming up to you know that can be, happen within the next month or two. Oh yeah. I mean, this economic crash could happen at any time. Yeah, and I think even more so, even more dangerous is what's going to happen afterward because whichever one of these skull and bones men wins, <laughs> they have carte blanche then. Well, I, I shouldn't even say when is selected, right? You know, but after that, then after November second or third, they have carte blanche. They have carte blanche for four more years, and um, you know, John Kerry, God forbid, he gets in there, and God forbid, if Bush gets in there, but either one, we're in dire straits. Well, what yeah. we're trying to do, Sherry, is give third-party candidates a forum on our shows, and so we have several of them coming up. We just had uh, Ralph Nader's spokesman, Kevin. Kevin Zeese on our show the other day, and we're going to have several more third-party candidates themselves interviewing with yeah. us. And is we're Ron Paul them, running this year? He's running this year, right? Yeah. Well, we're, we're, what we're telling them is if you really want to make an impact, you have to go for the throat. And, um, you know, with Ralph Nader's spokesman, we said, you know, this guy's been on the scene for four decades now. He has national prominence. Why isn't he talking about 9-11 all right. the time? This is where George Bush is vulnerable. And, and you could blow both of them out of the water. Right out of the water, and none of them are talking about it. So every candidate that's on, we're saying, if you want to do something, go for their jugular and go for 9-11 and bring it out on as, as big a scale as possible. Absolutely. Well, this is where owning the media in your back pocket comes in handy. Well, because Ralph Nader just doesn't get the time. Yeah, but if, if you know, he speaks at the National Press Club, and he is on CNN. And that's he is right. On, he has access to mainstream media that we don't. Yeah, he has more access than just about anybody. And if he came out there and started dropping a few of these bombs, mm -hmm. you know, there'd be some heads turning. He just got to stay out of the little small planes. <laughs> yeah. Stay out of the yeah. small planes. Well, you know, somebody has to have some guts somewhere. Yeah, someone's got to stand up. You know, I, I like that Cynthia McKinney out of Georgia. I'd like to see her back in office. Yeah, she's, um, she's yeah. making another run at it. You know, James Trafficant is as backwards as he was. At least he was doing something. Oh, he, right. he, he had a good head on his shoulders. Well, he was involved with a lot of that. That, that have you read Transformation of America? Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, he was involved with all that. You know, you know. I'm not even gonna get well, into it now. Well, that's what she says. That's yeah, that's what she, what she says does. in the book. Yeah, but you know what? I liked the guy. He just had his own style. Anybody that would go into Congress and wear cowboy boots on or whatever. Oh yeah, we like him a lot. We're a big fan of him. You know, and I didn't live too far from Youngstown, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm on the other side of Canton now. Uh huh. And, you know, we just never even heard of him much while he was up there until he started getting into trouble. Well, the good thing about traffic is that he stood up to him. And now he's in a, a Pennsylvania fed prison. Right. Right. And Pennsylvania's probably one of the toughest states to be in outside of Washington because they're totally controlled by the New World Order. Well, we need more people. See, when it's just one person here and one person there, it's not going to do any good. You need to have the force of, of great numbers of people. And we hopefully, need to be a you know, cohesive unit. You get enough people waking up and it sparks that one you leader. They'll just pull it all together. That's right. You know, and I just think we're running out of time. What they should fear is doing nothing, because nothing's going to get any better if we do nothing. <laughs> I mean, when those guys, three of them are threatening to sue the FBI to get the pictures off the sites, America should have been an uproar then. Why wait yeah. all this time? America should be asking, why was all the evidence carted away on 9-11 without any investigation. That's a crime scene. Don't we have laws put into place? Yeah, and why were the, like why were the firefighters forbidden to speak on what sure. they heard and saw? Then they say we can't prove they did 9-11, but look, they carted away all the evidence. <laughs> yeah, no, you know, they keep saying you can't prove it. Well, look at your lawn. Look at your building. Look, yeah. yeah. You know, why is it that a, a building that tall can fall and somebody's passport is still immediately Yeah, yeah. 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 it's yeah. amazing, isn't it? It's a miracle. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, how, what does it take to wake people up? I think a, a New York City, a 50% don't believe them, then 50, you know, at least we're getting somewhere. Mm -hmm. They had more of a reaction when Fred.